Front Revenge 3.0 saw the inclusion of many more Star Destroyer ships to factions such as the Empire of the Hand, the Empire itself, Pentastar Alignment and even the New Republic. Many of these ships in the update are either entirely new to Front Revenge or existing ships that have had a full visual update and the number of Star Destroyer labelled ships have increased exponentially since we last covered them let alone the balance updates they've also had. So it's a better time than ever to jump right back into Thrawn's Revenge 3.0 to figure out which is the most powerful Star Destroyer of them all. But before we jump into it, I want to ask you guys a question. Who do you think will be the winner? Let me know in the comments down below. I read all of them and I'll try to get back to some of you as well. But with that out of the way, let's jump right into the video. So I've gone ahead and selected quite a large range of Star Destroyers in the fleet battle mode in Front Revenge. Uh, it's a game mode that we don't necessarily cover a lot on the channel, but it essentially allows you to build whatever fleets you like and pit them together without having to make custom maps in a terrain editor of sorts. So it makes it all within the game itself and a lot more user friendly for people who want to make their dream fleets so we've got a large range here as mentioned we've got everything from ships that are actual star destroyers like the imperial star destroyer uh, the victory 2 star destroyer the the crimson command victories um, and so on and so forth but we've also got some other ships that are inspired by the star destroyer design but don't necessarily hold the star destroyer name so ships like the enforcer picket ship and the Praetor Mark II Battlecruiser are some of those. We also have some other ships that are from other factions like Empire at the Hand, where we have the Ascendancy Star Destroyer, uh, which has a beautiful model here, alongside uh, other ships that have a very similar Star Destroyer design, like the Shaft, which is actually inspired by the Victory Star Destroyer. And then we also have some very odd ships that have the Star Destroyer name, but don't necessarily follow the standard, which is the Peltas class Star Destroyer. So what we're going to be doing is we're not going to be pitting a Secutor against a Gladiator of sorts. That wouldn't be fair. But what we'll do is we'll probably try things like we'll put the Allegiance up against the Praetor, or we'll put the Nebula Star Destroyer against the Imperial 1 or the Imperial 2, and maybe a Venator against the Endurance. So maps, uh, fights like those, that will kind of give us a bit of an indication of what the balance changes have meant for a lot of these ships, and what is the most powerful Star Destroyer in Thrawn's Revenge. First up, we have the ISD-1 up against the Nebula Star Destroyer. So in a video previous to this, where Ek kind of pretty much tried to answer the same question um, uh, uh, of what is the most powerful Star Destroyer, he actually had an ISD-2 go against a Nebula uh, Star Destroyer, and I do believe that the Nebula lost, so much so that the AI was actually trying to run away because it knew it wasn't going to win. Um, now, the thing is with the uh, ISD-1 compared to the ISD-2 is that it drops a lot of like the ion uh, cannon damage uh, and swaps it out for like octopal uh, uh, ion uh, turbo lasers. So a lot more firepower on the bridge of the ship, while the ISD-1 has a lot more ion cannons uh, to shred those shields a little bit faster, uh, but yes, obviously trades out a lot of turbo laser uh, damage in return for it so it's not as strong plus the shields are a little bit weaker than its uh younger brother but here what we can see is that the, again the nebula star destroyer really just struggling to output enough damage against the uh isd1 uh which again like a lot of people will argue that you know the nebula star destroyer was a type of ship that was supposed to take on an isd1 it was designed that way in the uh, the new class project um, by the New Republic, but it seems like the Nebula Star Destroyer just really struggles to uh, get enough damage out, whether that be simply because there's not enough specialized fighters to help soak up some of the damage, or the fact that it just doesn't have enough turbo laser ba batteries to, to compensate for how many that the Imperial One has. So... Uh, again, there's a lot more hard points on the Imperial 1 Star Destroyer 2, 
which uh, kind of makes it a lot harder to strip down in terms of damage uh, compared to the Nebula Star Destroyer. So, yeah, I'll run that match over again just so we can get a better look at exactly what happens. So, looking at the stats for the Nebula Star Destroyer, we can actually see the hull is quite significantly less than the Imperial One, so much so by about 2,000 points. The shields are a little bit higher by about 1,000. Oh no, that less, sorry. Or 2,000 less as well on shields. So, statistically, the ship uh, just doesn't hold up against the ISD-1 in terms of just stats alone. Even though it does have an ultra-heavy turbo laser, it has not enough to kind of take on the the higher count in terms of hard points against the ISD-1. So it's not a surprise that the uh, Nebula Star Destroyer uh, just can't keep up. Despite, you know, some people, according to lore or legends, say that it should be able to keep up. We've discussed this previously in a, a, another episode about how perhaps the Nebula Star Destroyer might be a little bit underpowered, but realistically, that was a couple of, that was about like a year ago, and if it hasn't changed now, there's probably good reason for it. Um, that kind of like exceeds my knowledge in terms of Star Wars, and that's something Ek is probably more likely able to answer for. But um, yeah, it looks like the the ne in this battle, uh, the it's not doing nearly enough uh, damage compared to the last time um, and I haven't even pushed for the fighters to come in and deal extra damage because the previous match the Nebula stripped it down to half um, hull but here it's, it's barely shred shredding its shields and I think that could also be the fact that uh, the Imperial One is going to be able to strip the shields of a Nebula a lot faster thanks to it having a lot more iron cannons um, and then it may have just taken out the uh, the Nebula's Ion Cannons uh, first, which prevented it from doing enough shield damage to actually get to these hard points. So it kind of goes to show just how important it is to target specific hard points on the ship once those shields go down. So again, this goes to the ISD-1, uh, and we'll move on to the next match. So next up, we have the Venator Star Destroyer up against the Endurance, um, and we're going to be seeing... Who kind of wins in this battle? These are two very similar ships in the fact that they bear the Star Destroyer name. Well, Star Destroyer design, the Endurance doesn't, but um, they're both a hybrid of carrier and also some form of capital ship damage. Uh, I know a lot of people, uh, you know, believe the Venator is a very, very powerful ship, especially with its unique carrier design where it's uh, in the front here. Um, and also on the sides and on the bottom and the Endurance um, looking very much like the Nebula Star Destroyer because it's a part of the same uh, new project at, <clears throat> as the Nebula Star Destroyer um, but it's considered more of a carrier rather than uh, the Nebula which is more of like a capital ship um, now we did do this fight previously uh, in X video uh, about a year ago but um, I don't know actually who was the winner, but it definitely looks like the Venator is just not simply able to keep up. Makes a lot of sense considering that the uh, the uh, Venator is a older ship in general. Uh, I have I haven't put the um, fighters up against the Endurance compared to the Endurance producing uh, K wings and. A wings and such, which are definitely going to be a lot more effective than the Venator uh, spitting out uh, Thai bombers uh, like this one right here. It's, it's just not going to be able to keep up with the the damage of a, uh, a K wing. Um, uh, same same again with uh, interceptors and and Thai fighters compared to E wings. I think that's an E wing um, uh, and. And an A-wing. It's just the fighters are uh, not as strong. The uh, capital ship itself is just not that strong, uh, and the endurance is just pretty much stronger than the Venator in every way, shape, and form. Really, there's no uh, compromise with this ship. So, not a surprise really, considering their eras apart. But uh, something to. It's quite nice to see the uh, endurance get a bit of like a, a spotlight because. Usually it's quite underused, at least by me, 
in uh, Thrawn's Revenge, so it's nice to see just how powerful it actually is. Another fight I wanted to do was put the Ascendancy Star Destroyer from the Empire of the Hand up against the Endurance as well, because the Ascendancy is actually quite similar to the Venator class Star Destroyer in the fact that, as it says in its description, it draws its principles from both the Imperial class line of ships as well as the earlier Venator class. So it is a mixture of a sufficient like fleet carrier whilst also being able to spit out quite a significant amount of damage. Um, now unfortunately these fighters are not wanting to fight against the Ascendancy so I might actually have to just restart this battle which I'm actually going to do. So before jumping into the battle, we can see on the Ascendancy side that the hull is 4,350, shields at 4,800, and there is a good amount of uh, uh, firepower as well as ion damage from this fleet carrier. And for the Endurance, it's relatively the same, probably not as much uh, ion damage as uh, we'd like to see on the Endurance, so it'll be quite interesting to see if that will impact the fight in any way. But in terms for fighters, it's, uh, it's the same situation as the Venator. It's just uh, not going to have a significant amount of um, uh, impact on the battle. While this K-Wing uh, and the A-Wing certainly will. Like, you've got to remember the, the power of the uh, K-Wing in Front Revenge is nothing to shy away from. It's I've mentioned it a lot in... Um, when I was playing Skirmish, it was one of the best methods of play in terms of map control. They were just so powerful that um, you had to spam so many uh, interceptors to counter it. Uh, because because fighters are harder to hit, they, they uh, and uh, bombers are also harder to hit, but uh, from a capital ship side of things. But... Uh, they still like K wings just do a lot, like a lot of damage to capital ships in the turn. Um, and it's interesting to see that the endurance has actually gotten really up close and personal against the uh, ascendancy here. And uh, it's looking like it's definitely not going to win this battle. But I gotta say, um, the ascendancy is probably one of the most stunning models in Front Revenge out of all of them. Like, uh, is th there's so much detail in this ship that the guys at Thorns Revenge have seriously outdone themselves on it on, on something like this, especially the carrier that you see in the uh, the middle, which again is inspired by the Venator uh, Star Destroyer. Uh, just looks fantastic, you know. Um, yeah, so it looks like. It was a lot closer than the Venator Star Destroyer. Um, it looked like the Ascendancy was able to take down those shields on the uh, Endurance a lot faster. But honestly, I think the, the bigger amount of damage comes from its fighters that it's spawning. Like it's, it's, it's the same era difference of, of ships, you know, apart from the A-Wing and the Interceptor and the TIE Fighter. Like the K-Wing and what I believe is the E-Wing here as well uh, are, are just superior in every right. You know, like they're always going to be Losing able to control. win against whatever fight Cover is the Ascendancy is going to spit out. Watch for uh, and again, as I mentioned earlier, th that I damage from that K-Wing is Gun just nothing to scoff at. It's them. certainly uh, significant. So it looks like the Endurance is one I'm of the best uh, carrier uh, style ships that also packs in a punch so well played to the uh, endurance but what we'll do is we'll move on to another battle that I'm quite interested to see so next up we have the victory one star destroyer up against the uh, enforcer picket ship um, and do bear in mind that I've had to swap it over to a different faction which is why we're not getting the accurate fighters for the victory one but uh, let's go ahead and see what this fight uh, looks like. Now, it does look like the Victory 1 overall is just going Weapons to win ready, compared to the Enforcer Picket Ship on the basis that, you know, the hull, the shields, the firepower compared to a Victory just doesn't compete. Uh, not to mention the tire aggressor is not going in. So if you could do me a favor and get in there and start fighting. But um, one thing to note here 
and I noticed this when I was playing um, Skirmish with Corey Loses, is that despite, like, the Enforcer Picket Ship is a much cheaper ship to buy than the Victory 1. And yet, look how much damage it's able to output. It's able to strip down its shields completely, and I'm actually going to build another one just to see uh, how it does in terms of um, uh, hard points uh, after stripping its shields. The, this ship is very powerful in the sense that um, it's very small and it's got hard points, which means uh, it's already a relatively uh, harder to hit because of its size compared to the Victory 1. But um, it's, it's, it's a lot of firepower, even though the hull... And the shields aren't as high. And I ended up winning the skirmish battle against Koi because Koi was spending a lot more money on, on victories while the enforced picket ship is a lot, lot cheaper. And what I'll do is I'll actually try and get the, the prices of both ships up on screen now just so you can see exactly how worth it is. Um, but of, of obviously the, the, the main reason you'd want uh, enforced picket ships it's because you want to spam them, so I, I'm, I'm going to have to bring in two because I can't get those shields down in time. Um, but uh, because they're so cheap to build, you just keep building them over and over again until you've got like a full fleet of them. Um, so, of course, they are like heavy cruisers that spawn tie aggressors. Um, but again, just like the uh, the battle dragons, uh, the Hapen bat battle dragons, they their strengths come in numbers. And it's the fact that they're so cheap is that you can, you know, build a whole entire fleet of them to deal serious damage. And that's that's what it really comes down to, right? Because it's like, they're, it, they're, they're kind of hard to hit and you have to hit specific hard points to actually deal hull damage. So whilst, yes, the Victory's shields were down, two of these guys can do enormous amounts of damage um, to, to a Victory. And plus, you know... Uh, the Victory 1 in Thrawn's Revenge isn't super effective because obviously, as we all know, the Victory 1 Star Destroyer runs uh, concussion missiles along the uh, the, the brim or, or of the, uh, the ship here. Those open up to launch those uh, concussion missiles, while the Victory 2 uh, uses more turbo laser batteries. And because the functionality of Thrawn's Revenge is that you have to strip down the shields first before getting to the hard points, uh, kind of makes the victory one a little bit redundant unless you have the sub mod that reactivates shield generator hard points um, Honestly victory ones are not really worth the the, the money or the time um, So victory twos will have no problem really against enforcer picket ships Despite like because they have like more hull they're using more turbo laser damage um, and uh, are just generally a lot better off in long distance uh, fights uh, while the victory one doesn't really boast that type of firepower so whilst the victory one did win this battle as i expected because the enforcer picket ship is cheaper it's smaller less hull less shields uh in numbers um they will eventually uh overwhelm any type of fleet really so i really recommend having these in your fleets whether you're playing skirmish or in Galactic Conquest. But moving on to the next battle. So next up is probably likely to be our last in terms of capital ship fight, but we have what is the Imperial 2, what you're looking at right now, up against a Tector Star Destroyer. Um, now, again, um, fighters might not be super uh, correct when I swap over between fights, but essentially the difference between these two ships is that the Tector Star Destroyer gets rid of all of its hangar bays in return for more guns. So the Tector Star Destroyer as a result has more hard points, it has 14 medium turbo lasers um, but doesn't spawn any squadrons. Well again the Imperial 2 does have a hangar bay however it does have four medium octopal turbo lasers which definitely makes it pack a punch. Another thing to note is that the Tector Star Destroyer is smaller but actually has more hull and shields compared to the Imperial 2 Star Destroyer. Um, but as we can see in this fight, shield, more shields and more hull doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to handle yourself in a fight better. Um, the Texas Star Destroyer might be able to suffer less damage 
um, uh, when it comes to stripping out hard points because there's a lot more to take down for the ISD2. Um, but again, it also comes down to the fact how much damage the gunboats and uh, its uh, interceptors and uh, TIE bombers can actually do to make up for the fact that it has less hull and less shields. It does look really, really even here. And it looks like the Tech Star Destroyer on paper will probably likely win out. Uh, not to mention that if you're playing a Galactic Conquest or Skirmish, um, Tech to Star Destroyers are more expensive to build. Um, and you're probably seeing the reason why here. Um, because there's less hard points, less firepower from the Imperial to the Tech to Star Destroyer can just inch out a win. Um, and again, Tech to Star Destroyer has it all. It has everything uh, apart from like ion uh, damage. From what I see here, it does Our also support concussion missiles out. and assault concussion missiles. I mentioned in uh, the previous battle, um, concussion missiles don't really necessarily mean everything um, when it comes to Thrawn's Revenge in the way how uh, shields work, but it can still deal quite a lot of damage. And there we go, the Imperial 2 properly defeated and uh, the Tech to Star Destroyer inching out a win with about fourth of its hull left. So really showing just how much more credits it is. It's not that much, but um, it's definitely worth the value. But again, you're really trading out a lot in terms of a whole fleet because you're not getting those squadrons, which are really important in protecting a capital ship. You need those so you know you don't just take the, the brunt of the damage. The fighters also need to distract the enemies in some way, shape or form. But uh, there you go, the Tector Star Destroyer, I will probably say is likely to be the strongest capital ship in terms of Star Destroyers. Um, I might be wrong on that because I haven't done enough testing. So if you think there is another capital ship of the Tech to Star Destroyer range, let me know in the comments down below. But for now, I think I'm going to, uh, you, you know, uh, put my foot down and say Tech to Star Destroyer, probably one of the strongest Star Destroyers out there. But we'll move on to the Dreadnought level of, uh, sorry, Battlecruiser level of ships and see how they fare against one another. So next up for battle cruisers, we have the Allegiance battle cruiser and the Advanced uh, Star Destroyer, which is the Rakehell EXF. Now, this the problem with um, battle cruisers and eventually dreadnoughts is that each one of them are a step up from one of themselves. I find so it's quite difficult to find relatively equal. Star Destroyer battle cruisers uh, to make it a fair fight to see what will inch out in a, in a win. So on a 1v1, the, the Rake Hell will absolutely annihilate a, an Allegiance battle cruiser. So to make things interesting, I kind of like built up a little fleet of sorts. Um, the Rake Hell having a little bit of a smaller one compared to the Allegiance. So we're just going to see how that battle works out, if we can find anything interesting in uh, that these two factions going head to head so on the rake hell side we have the uh, two enforcer picket ships uh, and we have two arcs and light cruisers alongside it uh, for the ally uh, alliance we have um hang on let me start this fight uh, for the alliance we have the uh, standard dreadnought heavy cruisers um, and then we also have a Vindicator Heavy Cruiser and then two carriers alongside it. We actually have two Vindicators, I believe. I don't know where the other one's gone. Um, actually, I might have only just built one. That's fine. Um, either way, uh, as you can see here, the Allegiance Battle Cruiser just immediately gets wiped really, really hard here. Uh, the Rake Hell is uh, a monster, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and uh, Ek has actually covered it in his Advanced Star Destroyer uh, video. Um, if you want to know more about that ship, it is definitely going to be on X2. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on those type of videos in the future. Um, for the Rake Hell, though, uh, you've got like 26,000 hull, 42,000 shields. For the uh, Allegiance, you're talking 18,000 hull and about 16,000 shields, so half of what the uh, the, the Rake forces. Hell have. 
uh, has, uh, but it's not just about shield and hull. Whilst the Allegiant does have a lot in terms of like light dual laser cannons, quad ion cannons, quad turbo lasers, both light and heavy, it's got a lot uh, um, to, to boast about. But for the Raykel, you've got like 13 heavy dual turbo lasers and 12 heavy octopal ion cannons. So this thing will melt shields like there is no tomorrow. Um, so yeah uh whilst a lot of the um smaller ships kind of destroyed themselves in that battle uh we only really have um i'm just gonna throw everything here because i don't know why the AI is just not, not behaving correctly but uh here we can see like we've only got a uh, dreadnought and a uh, heavy cruiser left the um uh, allegiance battle cruiser already at like below half health we haven't really started on the rake hell um, the shields are just absolutely huge. Uh, there's a lot of damage to eat through. But, um, it would have probably been nicer to have this battle start where the fighters would actually go in. Um, perhaps that would have uh, caused the Rake Hell not to deal so much damage to our um, battle cruiser so suddenly. Uh, but I, I'm happy to do another one where we have two allegiances against uh, a Rake Hell. Um, and again, like, you know, if I put the Rake Hell up against the, the Praetor Mark II, Praetor Mark II might actually inch out on a win just based on the on stats alone, you know, like, they're, they're never really that equal. There's always a space in between one another that makes one better than the other. Um, so, what I'll do is, whilst we, it's, it's a definite loss for the Allegiance Battlecruiser here, We'll probably try and do another separate battle where we have two of them go against it and see how it fares. But besides that, if I speed things up a little, we can see the rest of the quad turbo laser batteries get destroyed. And then the whole ship thrown into disarray. <laughs> so starting our next battle, we have two allegiances going against the EXF here. And you can really see these ion cannons doing work because these shields get shredded by these octuple uh, ion cannon batteries and and again like i have to stress this is sixteen thousand shields and the exf is just eating it for breakfast uh now that the shields are down uh the the rake hell now has to start using its uh, uh 13 heavy dual turbo lasers to start breaking down hard points so it's up to this uh, allegiance to come in and really start shredding those shields as fast as possible. Again, the weaknesses for the Allegiance Battlecruiser is that it just doesn't really output enough damage in terms of uh, turbo laser power compared to its ion cannons. So the fact that we've got two of these and the shields are only down by two thirds is quite worrisome because whilst, uh, you know, this, this should be pretty easy for the Allegiance. Of course, it's 42,000 shields, it's double the hull of the Raycal, not to mention that it's got a lot less hard points, which makes it a lot easier for both of these ships to take down um, the, the, the actual hard points of the ship once the shields go down. However, I don't even think we're going to get to see that happen. Uh, maybe we will, but maybe I think about five hard points will go at max, because we've already lost pretty much one allegiance here that it's not really going to be much use at this point and our second allegiance shields are about to go down um because these iron iron cannons are not going to wait around though that those shields are as good as gone any second now um and it is we kind of i was kind of hoping these allegiances would be able to shred the octuple iron cannons uh before the shields uh get dangerously low on the second allegiance um and it does not look like it's going to happen at all. Um, so yeah, there goes our first Allegiance Battlecruiser. It's trying to rotate to get as much firepower out as possible. It's not going to happen. Um, this Allegiance that took the one side of the Rake Hal no longer working. So they're rotating. So they can get both sides of the uh, brim of the ship uh, at full firepower. And it does look relatively close, but... You got 18,000 hull and 26,000 hull, respectively. Um, you know what? I underestimated the Allegiance here. Uh, I was a bit worried because there's a lot of uh, ion cannon damage here. 
compared to you know uh, turbo laser battery power uh, but it's actually holding up quite well um, actually this is really close okay I wasn't expecting that I was expecting the EXF to kind of like shred both of these down pretty efficiently but uh, doesn't look like it not to mention that neither uh, Allegiance has any hangar bay. Uh, it's just like the Texas Star Destroyer, it's, it's yes, all about firepower and not about having a hangar bay of sorts. While the Raycal has a very uh, well established hangar bay, which we can see right here, um, and spawns quite a lot of um, uh, fighters, which it looks like the Allegiance has now shredded. Um, I think it's run out of fighters at this point. Uh, both ships are trying to rotate to get their hard points uh, uh, in effective range. Uh, Raycal seems to have achieved that already. The Allegiance has to do a full 360 for some reason <laughs> to get the remaining hard points here. Uh, but yeah, now we're starting to see... Well, the Allegiance was about to regenerate shields there. I don't know if you saw that, but there was a small amount of shield regen. Yeah, it's regening shields. I don't know. No, it's going for the engines, so. We're going to. The Legion, the Legion is going to beat this. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. Obviously, it was two Allegiances, so we can't give the win to them. The Raycal still is a better. Um, uh, I'm, I'm losing my words here. <laughs> the Raycal is still a better battlecruiser. Um, so, I, you know. It still wins overall, but that's actually quite interesting. I thought uh, thought the EXF was 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 going to pull a, a clear win against two allegiances, considering how well it went at the beginning of the uh, battle. But again, it only has twenty six thousand hull compared to its like forty two thousand shields, so that's where the illusion of it winning uh, was apparent at the beginning. But yeah, I'll, I'm gonna have to give it to the Ray Cal, even though because on a one v one, the allegiance just can't win. Um, and we'll move on to our next battle. So our last battle for battle cruisers before we start edging into Dreadnoughts is the Raycal, the EXF that we had earlier, against the Praetor Mark II. So again, as I mentioned, there's a big step between these two ships. So there is going to be quite a clear winner in the Come sense on. that uh, the EXF is Reporting significantly in. stronger uh, weaker, sorry, than the, uh, the the Praetor Mark II, and um, I'd actually be really surprised if it does does win, because I know I've been yat yattering on about oh hull and shields isn't everything, but we're talking like thirty five thousand shields and thirty eight thousand hull compared to forty two thousand shields but twenty six thousand hull, um, and the Praetor Mark II having a better hangar bay. Four squadrons uh, with 30 heavy Excellent quad turbo shot. lasers, 12 medium dual turbo lasers, five heavy dual ah. ion cannons, and 12 medium dual ion cannons. So very, so it's got some ion cannon damage there, uh, but a lot of um, hard point firepower as well. And the Raycal, as mentioned before, has quite an equal level amount of high ion damage and high uh, turbo uh, laser damage. So it does seem pretty close. But I'd say it's quite equal because obviously the shields are higher on a, on a, the advanced Star Destroyer. Um, but it really comes down to the hull. This hull is going to start shredding real fast. Um, and we're going to start seeing the Praetor suddenly catch up in terms of uh, firepower. Awaiting As orders. for fighters, it looks like the uh, Praetor has actually stopped generating fighters now. Um, it was spawning a lot of interceptors and a lot of bombers, but it looks like ours came out on top, which was quite interesting. Mostly because we the, the fights probably play quite defensively, and the rate cow was helping them with that. So hopefully we can regain that momentum by f throwing these uh, fighters in on the Praetor to distract it. It's very close. You know what? I might actually be wrong about this. Uh, in terms of a 1v1... I, I, I genuinely might be wrong. It's it's so close because like the Praetor 
uh, does look like it's lost more health in terms of hull, but as I mentioned, it's, that's 10,000, 12,000 more hull than the uh, uh, rake hull. Um, and those heavy, 30 heavy quad turbo lasers is nothing to scoff at compared to the rake hull's 13 heavy dual turbo lasers. It's got far less hard points, which make it a lot easier to take down compared to the Praetor. Praetor just has so many hard points to, to, to wipe out. Uh, that it can be quite difficult for a ship uh, like this, where it has to rotate its hull left and right to try and hit those uh, hard points respectively on the brim of the Praetor Mark II. So uh, I do think the yeah the 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 EXF is going to go down, but uh, wow, did it actually convince me for just a split second that I might have been wrong? <laughs> uh, it is it is a uh, one, a beautiful ship, but two, a, uh, a very, very strong one too. Um, the only chance it can, can to catch up is what one, is obviously, the fighters, which I don't think it's going to happen now because even the rake house ran out of fighters to spawn. But secondly, uh, kind of take advantage of the fact that the Praetor is wider and has to rotate further to 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 utilize all of its firepower or well, the rake hull doesn't have to as much but, you know i don't know it seems like Destroyer i'm gonna have to get them closer i don't know why Copy. they started Attack. they stopped firing at each other like now they're regenerating shields guys what are you doing I think it starts getting into the issue that these ships shortly. start getting so big that hard points in the back are out of range compared to the ones in the front. So the ships are forced to get closer to actually utilize all of their firepower. You'll definitely see this in with the dreadnoughts. Like, uh, and it, 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 it's, it's hard because it's like Star when you right click a battle cruiser like this, the a uh, the the. the the, the ship is calculated to go so far close to it and then because it's so big that means some of the hard points don't get utilized it's a common problem um and that's why fighting with large battle cruisers and even bigger dreadnoughts require a lot more knowledge and positioning yes, <laughs> rather than you know brain dead right clicking right on the enemy and hoping that you win <laughs> so i'm gonna let the uh EXF get a bit closer so the Praetor can win. But, um, you know, fair play. Rake Hell really the iron are showed me that it was, it's, it's a lot more than just stats. But well done to the Praetor. So, I think overall, unless you're going to start saying that the Bellata the is not destroyed. a Dreadnought and more of a battle cruiser, uh, I'll have to give it to the Praetor because I'm going to assume. The Bellator Superstar Destroyer is actually a Dreadnought. And um, give, give the, the win in terms of battle cruisers to the Praetor Mark II. And uh, yeah, let's move on to our final battle. So moving on to our final battle, it's just the battle of the Star Destroyers at this point. They're kind of hard to get into one map without the game crashing. Um, but what we'll do is we'll have the Eclipse and the Executor and the Bellator and the Sovereign all kind of like come together and fight it out 1v1, v1, <laughs> free for all basically, and uh, see how that uh, fares. I'm also going to have to put him in Jinj because Empire the Hand is a bit buggy against Empire. Uh, so where is that? The Sovereign. In I'm actually interested to see how the Sovereign and the, the Eclipse go head to head because of the super lasers. But um, let's start the battle. Uh, I'm. Which one am I running again? Oh, the uh, Empire. So I'm actually going to turbo uh, super laser the uh, Executor. Uh, the Executor being the second best in terms of uh, stats. Uh, but. Uh, the worst being the Bellator, because it's the smallest of the Superstar Destroyers, or the Dreadnoughts. Um, and the Sovereign coming in in third. So here we can see <clears throat> the Eclipse, nearly like 100,000 hull, uh, 72,000 shields. 
the uh, executor 600 60,000 shields and 84,000 hull um, and then for the sovereign it's 62,000 shields 69,000 hull and the little bellata which is my favorite one of the lot uh, 39,000 shields and 41,000 hull I love the bellator like Anybody who watched my SSD Rampage campaign, if you haven't, by the way, so I put a lot of effort into that uh, campaign. Uh, loads of uh, cutscenes and custom cutscenes and everything. So if you want to go and watch that, it'll be in the pinned comment uh, down below or in the t uh, info card in the top right. Uh, so go go and check that out. Uh, yeah, I, as you, if you've watched it, you know I absolutely love the Bellator. <laughs> um, it's definitely my favourite, and it looks like they're all ganging up on one another, uh, ganging up on it. They see it's the weak, the runt of the family <laughs> of uh, Star Destroyer-esque Dreadnoughts and it's just destroying it, which makes me sad. Um, but yeah, it was my favourite in SSD Rampage because they had such a lower amount of uh, cap ship, uh, like, uh, cap, cap ship capacity. So I could put four down in one map against what you could only put down, like, two executors, I think, and you could outmaneuver them. Um, and out position them to, to get the most damage. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so that's why I love the Bellator. But yeah, the Eclipse is just going to straight up win. I'm just putting this up here for, for you guys to, to enjoy. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit unfair. Oh, I missed that super laser hit. But I think that was the Sovereigns destroying the, uh, destroying the uh, Bellator. But yeah, uh, it's still still quite interesting to see. Like the camera's so having to pull back so far back to actually capture this. It's uh, it's, it's nuts. Sovereign's model definitely looking a bit dated, but I mean I I've never seen it properly used in in game before. So uh, what I will say though is that the executor's model looks amazing. I love it. Looks beautiful. Uh, have I got another super laser? No, that's actually for a little bit. But yeah, it's it's quite interesting to see. Uh, either way, like uh, the the um, the eclipse still having its shields. Sovereign's about to go down next, and the executor out of shields as well. It's just at this point, like even the stats are like bewildering to me. Like fifty heavy dual turbo lasers, fifty five heavy laser cannons. And a little bit of ion damage. Executors like 50 heavy, 50 medium. Wow, that's, that's a lot. Like the. That's a lot of firepower, even for like the executor. Wow. I was actually kind of like shocked by those stats. Um, and then for the Sovereign's just like not got anything compared to it. Maybe the heavy dual turbo laser and the heavy laser cannons. I mean, is that the same as the. Oh, just almost the same as the Eclipse. Actually, is that the same? Yeah, it is, bar five heavy laser cannons. Just smaller hull and... I mean, obviously, it's just like... It's uh, a smaller... Uh, wait, otherwise, a smaller smaller than an executor class. It, isn't it just like the Eclipse? So why is it saying executor? I, I might be reading that to talk to it from. Um, yeah, but it is pretty much just like a small miniature Eclipse. So I'm not surprised yes. the stats are the same. Um... But there we go. I'll speed this up. Sovereign's gonna die. So is the executor. The eclipse shield's just about down now. Um, so yeah. Best Star Destroyer labeled design for the dreadnoughts. It's uh, Eclipse, obviously. Coming back around Everyone knew. Run. <laughs> that wasn't the fun part of the video. Target lock. Enemies in and there goes the executor. Rest in peace. And then we've just got the sovereign. It's about to go down. I and the eclipse. Now. Not even the halfway down target. on hull. Not surprised. Good. Good night, sweet prince. There we go. Wow. What a death animation. Oof. Okay. Yeah. What a death animation. <laughs> Wow. But yeah, there we go. Moving on to some special mentions.
In terms of honorable mentions, I couldn't actually build this in the custom fleet uh, mode. And I have to use Supremacy to quickly get this one out. But uh, the New Republic also has a Star Destroyer. Uh, coming into Thrawn's Revenge 3.0, which I think is really, really interesting. And the design's actually super interesting as well. Uh, uh, cleverly named the Republic Star Destroyer. Um, Star it is Destroyer a compact destroyer designed as a political move for improved new Republic ties with the Rendil Star Drive. Smaller and more efficient than its Imperial class due to having less component, uh, complement and consumer... Hang on. Yes, Commander. Try not to let one on your tail. <laughs> A compact destroyer designed as a political move for the improved New Republic ties with Rendell Star Drive, smaller and more efficient than its Imperial class due to having less complement and consumable space, focuses more on firepower than durability compared to the corresponding Mon Calamari vessels, but not to the extreme of the smaller Nebula class successor. So, um, hull 5600, shield 6000. Four heavy turbo lasers, eight dual, light dual turbo lasers, and two medium ion cannons. I'd love to have this in a custom battle against an ISD. So if you want a video like that, let me know in the comments down below. And also hit the like and the subscribe button so you don't miss out on that video. Um, but yeah, I really like the design of this ship. Because it does give that pizza wedge Star Destroyer look, but in a New Republic way. Uh, so it's quite unique in that sense, and it's actually quite powerful, uh, as you saw by the hull and the shield, despite the, the description saying that it doesn't go as far as what the Nebula Star Destroyer can do. I think it packs a lot more of an, a punch com uh, compared to it, um, and I think if anything's going to have a better chance at a Imperial, it could be this, perhaps. Um, I would say, like, in terms of its hull and, and its shields and stuff like that, probably compare it more to a victory 2 in terms of firepower than an imperial but it would still be interesting nonetheless so again if you want to see those comparisons and a head-to-head -head, uh, let me know and leave a like so I know that you guys want that type of content but yeah not in the uh, custom fleet battle mode just yet I'm assuming that'll be in uh, version 3.1 uh, but still really really interesting nonetheless so there is the Republic Star Destroyer and that is pretty much the end of the video, guys. So, uh, did you get your suggestions right? I'll leave the results of the uh, the, the, the testing um, in the bottom of the video here. I just want to stress as well, um, this isn't like completely correct. There is probably some ships I'm totally missed out on that I didn't have enough time to record. So, if I did miss those, let me know in the comments as well. Uh, so perhaps we can do another sequel to this type of uh, style of video and if you do want more head-to-heads like this let me know again it's all about feedback so I'm always uh, open to your suggestions and ideas guys so uh, besides that I've been Charlie you've been watching X2 and I'll see you in the next video take care guys